Right, so here's a fun little problem. Um, we're actually going to have a, a chain of length big L, and we're just going to be dropping it onto a scale. So the situation looks kind of like this. Here's a scale. Here's a chain. Um, just put a nice knot in it. Oh well. Okay, so if I if I hold the the chain like this, so it's not even touching the scale yet, and then drop it onto the scale. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, I think I saw the reading here go over two grams, I'm not sure. It bounced up a little bit. Um, so you can see the chain here weighs about 1.9 grams. Um, well, I guess that's its mass. Um, but uh, uh, obviously this scale is not quick enough to, to catch any uh, changes in the in the force on the scale uh, for these sorts of uh, time scales that we're looking at. Uh, but yeah, just to give an idea of kind of what this is. All right, so um, so yeah, so what is the what do we expect the reading on the scale to be as a function of time as we as we drop this chain? Well, um, obviously before the chain is uh, touching the scale, say say this link is just hovering barely above the above, above the scale, just about to touch it. Uh, obviously we'll get zero here. And on the, let, let me write this down. So um, before dropping, we should get, uh, let me, let, let's just call it W for weight equals zero. Okay, and after we will have the, the full weight of the of the chain uh, just sitting there. Uh, so we get uh, mg, right? But we're going to go ahead and put it in terms of this mu and length. So mu multiplied by the length is the mass. So mu times big L times G. So this will be what we would expect to, to get for the reading once, this, once the chain is completely here on the scale. All right, so, um, so there's going to be two different parts of this that we need to look at. One part is the chain that has already landed on the scale and is resting here. It will just be some portion of this length, whatever has come and rested on the scale, that will just be dead weight, I guess, that, that will add to the, to the total weight. Okay. Uh, the other part is um, uh, we have links actually hitting the chain, or excuse me, links of the chain actually hitting the scale, uh, so transferring momentum. And so um, we, can, we can go ahead and uh, I'm going to go into this a little bit. Uh, so we have uh, the force, right? And um, we will just use the form of Newton's second law where this is a change in momentum uh, with respect to time. So um, So we're looking at uh, how much does the momentum change as as these links are, are hitting the scale? So that will be this force in addition to, again, the dead weight of the chain that's already resting on the scale. I'm going to go ahead and write this um, as a limit uh, as uh, uh, delta T goes to zero of uh, mass of a, of a link or whatever um, and the the change in the velocity so well yeah let's just write that as delta V okay so maybe we write delta V going to zero two I don't know anyway okay so just writing this as the limit um, the change in velocity is just the velocity of the, the chain right before it hits um, 
because right afterwards, uh, well, I guess it's minus the velocity of the chain right before it hits, because right afterwards it's zero. Um, so if we look at uh, what velocity we expect the chain to be hitting the scale, we could just get that straight from uh, the, the projectile motion type equations. It's just a straight drop. Um, so, you know, V is equal to uh, any initial V, which is zero, right? And then just minus uh, G multiplied by the time that it spends falling. Um, so suppose we pick a point in the chain that we can just use as a reference point. I'll call this point H because it's H uh, meters or whatever above the, above the scale. Uh, so let's solve for the T real quick for this. So, um, so for that we just use you know, X equals X naught plus V naught T minus one half GT squared. All right, there's no, um, well, we'll go ahead and call this x0, right? Down here, we'll call this 0. It come, falls down, reaches the point at 0. It started up at h. Uh, there's no initial velocity, so just a minus 1 half gt squared. This gives us a time of, uh, so we just have a 2h over g under a square root. Okay, so right before the this link, which is initially located at H, right before it hits the scale, it will have a velocity right here uh, equal to uh, minus G, and then multiplied by, by T right here, so 2H over G. Or in other words, minus... 2gh under a square root like this. Okay, so um, so what this means? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe we can write this another way. So if we let's go ahead and write uh, this equation right here. As uh, f and then a oh, we'll put the dt over here on this side, um, and then we will have m multiplied by this change in velocity, um, which again it comes to rest. So uh, we're just going to use the we'll take zero the the final velocity minus this uh, velocity that it had right before. Okay, so anyway, uh, basically what we'll get, we'll just get m multiplied by this 2gh. All right. Um, real quick, let's look at what m is. Um, we have this mu, which we can put in uh, differential form, dm over dl. And... Uh, so therefore, uh, if we integrate to, well, let's write it this way. So we have uh, just a dm equals mu times dl. All right. Um, and I guess you know what? Uh, really, what I what I should have done here. Maybe I should have written these as, as differentials as well. But this mass isn't the mass of the whole chain. Um, it's actually just the mass, the tiny amount of mass of this link that's, that's hitting, hitting the scale. Um, so the mass of one link, um, we can use uh, dm for that. Right. So I uh, probably didn't write this in the best way. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put this dm uh, in for this little piece of mass here. Okay, so, um, all right, so all I need here is a, a mu 
square root of 2gh. Okay, and then we have this dl. Okay. So if I if I bring this uh, dt back down, I'm sure there's a much more straightforward way of going through this. Uh, we we have this dl over dt, um, and that is just the velocity of the chain. So a little piece of the chain, um, a distance over a time, right? So that's the that's the actually the velocity of the chain uh, right here at this point where it's hitting the scale. All right. So what we can do is actually plug in our velocity uh, again. I'll just use the absolute value because we know kind of what signs we're we're looking at anyway. All right. So what we have here is we just uh, we just get another factor of this uh, 2gh under a square root in, in place of this. So we just have a 2gh and then uh, this mu. <coughs> All right, so this is the part of the force from the momentum transfer. or the falling lengths, or anyway, uh, just due to the, the impulse of the, of, the, of the chain links hitting the, hitting the scale. Um, so now, uh, how much would the, uh, how much weight do we expect to already be on the scale? So again, what we talked about, there are, there are two components here of this. One is what we've been talking about, what we just solved for. <coughs> which is what is the force on the scale due to these little links falling and hitting on, hitting it right so now we also want to know the force on the scale due to the pile of chain that has already fallen um, so when when this link up here at height h which we have just solved for uh, when this has fallen <coughs> excuse me when this has fallen and hits the scale that just means that there's this much chain that has already fallen onto the scale. So the length of chain which has already come onto the scale is just h. All right, so um, um, how should I, how should I, I'll just, I'll just write dead. I don't know. This is just the dead weight of the chain that has already fallen. We have to call it something to keep it separate from this. All right, so that's just uh, mg, and m is equal to h, the length of chain, multiplied by the mass density of the, of the chain, so h mu, and then we have our g. So we can just see that this, uh, at, at the point when this arbitrary link on the chain, which was a height h above the scale when we started, at the point that that arbitrary link hits the scale, um, the, anyway, the, the amount of uh, force on the scale due to the link hitting the scale is actually twice as big as all of the chain that is already sitting there on the scale. So if we now, let's just call w uh, Forgive me for using these. I'll call this one live. Why not? Uh, so what I mean by live is just the, the link that is still in motion, and the ones that are dead are the ones that are already sitting there. Kind of weird. All right. Uh, but yeah, we just add these two together, and we just get 3GH mu. So if we want to look at uh, how this changes uh, as a function of time rather than as a function of, of, uh, of which link is hitting the scale at that moment, that we just have to, again, look at uh, this equation that we solved for. Uh, so h is equal to one-half gt squared. So if we just plug that in, 
we get three halves g squared. Is that right? G squared. Okay, we have this mu as well, and then uh, t squared. All right. <clears throat> so, um, kind of what we're looking at here is if we look at the general uh, way the forces is, uh, if we were to plot it on, you know, if we were to, if we have this as our weight and here is our time, um, hook it up to a computer, plot the data, we expect to see a parabolic increase, all right, uh, to the, the t to the uh, second power, parabolic increase in the weight until the last link hits the scale and as soon as that link goes from being quote-unquote alive to quote-unquote dead, the, uh, the weight immediately drops down to uh, this value here. All right, so uh, real quick what we could um, expect uh, if we just plug L in for this H, uh, we get 3g l mu, and it's in different order here, but this is just g l mu without the, the 3, so it's just one third. All right, so it's coming up, it's coming up, and then if we were to uh, let's see if I can do this, divide this roughly into three sections, right, at the point at which the uh, the last link hits, which, uh, what does that, when does that happen? That happens at 2 big L over G under a square root, so. All right, so I have a tiny arrow pointing to this point on the, on the timeline here. Um, at the time 2 big L over G under a square root, the last link will hit the scale, turn from live to dead, and the weight on the scale will drop uh, to a factor of one-third what it was uh, before. So right up here, again, let's write this in. Uh, this is 3 mu LG, and this is here just mu LG. <coughs> so that's kind of what we're looking at here. So it's kind of interesting, I mean, that the you think of how the um, the link uh, hitting the scale at any point along uh, this this and throughout this whole process, the force from one of these links hitting the scale is actually twice as large as the weight of all of the chain that has fallen before. And so, I mean, obviously that's just because they started higher and higher up, so they've had much more uh, time to accelerate. They started with much more potential energy, however you want to look at it. So anyway, an interesting result.